Not sure where I got the stuff. O'Reilly Auto Parts, Portland, Oregon, uh, corner of uh, Grand and Ankeny. Uh, they hooked me up with a decent deal. Uh, found out they do a military discount now, so that's good. You got your veteran ID card uh, or your reserve, it's National Guard, whatever. Uh, good ten percent off. So I got the Deep Cycle Marine battery for uh, oh, like 80, 80 some odd dollars. Um, I pay the core charge and then never see the money again because I'm buying the battery outright. So that was one of the reasons they kind of helped me out with that. So uh, we're going to move on with more on the solar generator and mobile tool cart build. So on with the build on the uh, little add-on solar power system. Now I have a, uh, a power system uh, semi-permanently installed in this trailer. This is basically the, the power management thing. I'm using a car stereo component here that was salvaged from another project. And of course new cable or power coming in from the roof. The Schneider, uh, I believe that's the 35 amp charge controller. Um, anyway, uh, the way this thing works is I've, I've got overkill in here as far as the amount of power that I'm able to produce versus what I'm using and, and the other factors involved. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've added different types of plugs to work with DC power. The one that uh, we're going to focus a little bit more on here is what's called an OEM plug. Uh, kind of a US standard right here. It's used in the RV industry. We're going to be using this as a secondary power attachment point for this uh, power system right here. Uh, I've also re-rigged this to work as a 12 volt. After a lot of comments, uh, most, of, most of which were kind of stupid, uh, I, I have decided that I'm going to try and work with a different type of a plug system. Although I think this works there are some others which will help avoid the confusion that you might encounter when you hook an AC device up to DC power. Uh, so I, I will be changing some, a lot of stuff over as far as future applications goes. Uh, just to get a inverter working, obviously you need battery juice. Okay. Um, in order to keep the power up, you either need to have a running vehicle or some other source of power. In this instance, there's solar panels on the roof of this trailer. I also have some semi-portable solar array and panels, um, one of which I thought I left in here. I guess I have in another, another room. And, um, and of course there's other ways to make electrical power. But the, again, this is a little 12 volt nominal, which means that it can be anywhere from 11, 11 to 16, 17, 18 volts. Um, but in order to get the inverter to work, we have to have some relatively thick cables going between the battery and the inverter. Now, Harbor Freight, Suntech, they do sell what they call inverter cables, which are very, very big, heavy cables. It's $40 a set. The reason is because there's a lot of copper involved. They're a long cable, and you need to have a lot of copper to move the level of amps you need to get a, an inverter like this going. Uh, you just need a lot of metal to move that power. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can shorten the cable run. Now, because this isn't being permanently installed in the vehicle, this is going on an independent little cart, uh, semi portable, or relatively portable arrangement, I can afford to use a little bit thinner cable as long as it's a short cable run. As long as we're not trying to pump that electricity over a very long distance, we can use a little bit thinner cable. So, this is 4 gauge cable. Uh, we're going to do some testing, but I believe it's going to work just fine. Uh, what I did was I went over to the uh, the O'Reilly Auto Parts and I bought two of these, one one red, one black, uh, one corresponding to positive, the other negative. There should be no ambiguity on this. The other thing I do when I'm trying to work an auxiliary power system is that there's going to be other 12-volt stuff I want connected into here, and rather than try to do everything on a terminal, I try to get these with a terminal where it's already partially built on. That way I'm able to pinch my other connector in. Uh, in batteries, I'm finding that the RV, Marine, Deep Cycle batteries that still have starting amps are some of the best way to go. Uh, and that's because they have both types of attachment point on the battery so that if you're going to daisy chain batteries, you, when you're daisy chaining batteries, uh, for that type of application, you kind of want to use a thicker cable. You've got room to add those cables because you have the additional attachment points. And we'll show how that works as I 
expand this system out a little bit. But on the initial build, this is going to be a single battery, single inverter system. One of the things to understand, though, is that if you're trying to run anything for an extended period of time or for a lot of power, it's going to drain that battery down fairly quickly, and you need to have the means to get power back into it fairly quickly. And that's going to necessitate an added cable, which we're not going to be doing today. We're just doing the initial build without much of the expansion. So I'm going to get a few of these components attached and explain to you how they went. What we have here is relatively dirt simple stuff. I've hooked up the leads for the inverter. Um, here we're using some metric bolts that originally from a bicycle application it, because usually those have that thing that allows me to use an impact driver to draw this down. And here you can see all those 20, these are, uh, uh, how long were these cables? That says uh, 25 inch cables. And here you can see how the 25 inch cables really pushing it for length even when these two devices are right next to each other. So don't be surprised if you find yourself needing longer cables and of course everything would uh, uh, you may need to go to a thicker gauge of cable if you're doing a longer cable run. Uh, here I've got the little side connectors. Uh, that was a pinched in barrel connector. I don't, I don't like those because they can still pull out. I tightened it down as best I could. I put the tape on as an added measure to make sure it's secure. You could also use a heat shrink arrangement for that. Uh, what I also did was this, this cord comes in this length. It's a fairly good length for its application. Uh, these things are relatively standardized on what the positive and negative side would be. So, you know, here's another one that I'm probably going to end up mounting in the side of the box somewhere. But what I have to be very careful of is screws that would stick through the other side and possibly penetrate the battery. So there's probably going to be inner box, outer box arrangement on this with another power strip in front of it for uh, running a lot of this stuff. And this will all fit on a very small cart. It will be relatively portable, but still pretty heavy. And so that's why I want to do the cart arrangement, uh, but today we're probably going to do it on, on a board arrangement to start that out and then build the cart around it. So we've got the little side adapter and again that's to avoid having a, a stack of things that pinch down on this, but that's another valid way to do it. Uh, tying it into my main electrical system using this connector right here allows me to um, allows me to have these batteries kind of equalized with each other but you don't want to leave it like that full time with a load on there because what it will do is it will draw down the whole system. The thing is because this system is so overpowered because I have 400 watts of uh, continuous power production whenever the sun's out and only about 5 watts of power usage when the sun's not out, I can afford to leave this in and it helps equalize the charge between batteries which are of different sizes. If you're really going to use something like that continuously though, you need your batteries all hooked up in uh, uh, I I uh, with each other using a thicker cable. But because these batteries started out fully charged and they're being discharged at different rates, I think we're going to be okay. Um, so uh, what we'll do here is we turn this on. Again, this thing's not drawing all of its usage power from here. It's drawing it direct from the battery through the thicker cables. We need to understand that. So what I'm going to do is I need to cut the board for it from this uh, particle board. And we're going to uh, make the base for it. So I'll take some measurements. I'll cut the board using the worm drive saw that normally will not run on a 2000 watt inverter that I have mounted in this trailer. So what I needed was 30 by 16. I couldn't hold the camera while making a cut, but we've got no problem at all using the big skill saw uh, plugged directly in. But uh, my starting cut, the line was here, not here, so I had to get over to the side to get on that line. This is going to be a part that doesn't show, it's not super precision. So we'll make the other cut here. Uh, that way it's a proof of concept on the 3KW inverter working with this. Here we are. Uh, I've got the board cut and stuff screwed down, just little screws here. Uh, that's to keep it from shifting around as this board might get mounted on something else. I'm probably going to end up putting some trim around it to reinforce it because it came from a uh, previous project. I've got a little bit of uneven thing here, but again, it doesn't mean anything to the electricity that's going through there. 
but we want to keep things relatively tidy. So we have the uh, the inverter secured down just so it won't shift around much. On the inside of the battery box, again, we got to risk uh, uh, make sure that we're not going to risk penetrating the battery with a screw. I put a couple of pieces of wood in there as filler and then screwed the wood down, which of course screws the battery box to the uh, board. One of the tricks on this is to make sure the screws aren't so long they penetrate the other side, then you deal with this whole goofy situation of trying to grind those off. Didn't have that problem this time. So this is the basics of the system. And of course we've got a single plug as an interface point with, as far as any charge controllers or other battery or charging systems would work. The other thing you could do is pop the cover off and run jumper cables. But as this thing expands, and you'll see multiple parts in this video, we're going to, going to expand this into a modular semi-portable system that can uh, uh, be used on job sites, cabins, boats, uh, RVs, that sort of a thing. But it's a system you can relatively easily take out and move from location to location or installation to installation.